when we were at Woodstock working at Todd's place, um, we actually got all the, the timings of the tracks, the beats per minute, if you like. We got that worked out, and all the basic chords were put down in a rough sort of fashion. Uh, basically plotted out tape space, if you like. So that was the way Todd wanted to do it, is to plot it out right across the tape. That's we basically, I mean, some of the tracks are actually, we, we actually stopped playing. Um, at the end of um, Summer's Cauldron, just before Grass comes in, I think we actually stopped playing because they are actually put onto the tape that way. It was quite bizarre, but that was the way he liked to work, very systematically, and, you know, and um, I think all the tracks were booked and, and recorded in the sequence that they appeared on the record, you know, that was the way he liked to work, and we had never worked that way, but who's to say it's right or wrong, you know. I said to Todd, look, I can't work this way. I need to know where the drummer's foot is. You know, I, I need to know what his foot's going to be doing in certain songs, you know. And um, from my perspective, it would be better if we went to San Francisco and got the drums done, and then I can do my bass at the end, you know. And he was very good about it. Okay, if that's the way you like to work, then let's do that. We'll get Prairie's drums down, and then we'll see about some bass afterwards. The actual sound of the record is n like no other we've made, really. Todd's way of recording, I think he, he records a lot of middle into the sound. And um, a lot of people like to hollow that out. You listen to something like Dear God, I mean, it sounds great on the radio. But you wouldn't associate it with being a, a nice round end, you know. I think we've gone for a, perhaps a cosier bottom end on a lot of our records. Um, in comparison to the sound of Skylarking, you know. That's not to say that I dislike it. In fact, I think I prefer it, to be honest, from a lot from the sound of a lot of our other records, you know, simply because it does sound so good on the radio and it's got that kind of good center to it, you know. Listening to that record from a bass perspective, I would have liked to have been a lot more rehearsed. I say that because the band the band generally does not like rehearsing, and so you you learn what you can learn as you go along. Um, there were there were demos, but they were kind of fairly primitive, and uh, you gleaned what you could from them. But uh, everybody was of the opinion, well, let's not rehearse it up because Todd may want to change it. You know, nobody learned anything, and when we got over to Woodstock, it was a bit of a shambles, because he said, well, let's play it through, and nobody nobody knew what to play, really. Uh, so um, the initial run-through was not good, and we should have, we should have rehearsed up to a, a, a degree before we went to America, really. But um, everybody was of the opinion, well, we better not learn it up too well, because... Uh, Todd may want to change it, you know. Um, but on the, on the, on reflection, we should have learned more than what we actually the knowledge that we had when we got there, you know. Yes, I think we probably have. You can never say never, but um, the way we are with each other at the moment, and the sort of things that we're doing at the moment. It appears that we're going off in different directions and uh, it doesn't seem like we can come together again and it's unlikely that we will, you know. Well, I've kind of um, gone through a bit of a metamorphosis, you know. I've uh, <laughs> um, Writing the, uh, the old pop songs has, um, has uh, given way to something else. I... Um, I write my own verses now. I occasionally put them to music, but uh, <clears throat> I just found the, um, the confines of the pop song a bit too uh, restrictive, if you know what I mean. As one gets older, one, one wants to communicate more and more uh, solidly, I think. And um, I think I'd pretty much taken the pop song as far as I could take it, you know? Been doing it for kind of about 30 years. You think, well, 
you just felt as, as though there was must be another avenue that you could explore, you know. But I suppose my my primary aim is to uh, is to try and get a collection together and and release some a publication, you know, a book. But um, that's a that's a bit of a long way off yet. I've still got a bit to go, you know, before I arrive at that stage. Um, as I say, you know, that's, I'm working on these verses, and uh, you know, that's. Uh, Taken, taken my career in a bit of a detour, I suppose. Uh, you know these poems that I've been writing. Now, most of them is about is not about music, but there is one specifically, which I think is about pop music from a different, completely different angle. From, from a, my perspective, as being has been in the industry quite some time, it has a kind of a pathos about it. And uh, for young players, it may uh, <laughs> may put them on the right road. It's called Name This Tune, and it goes. It's the guy who writes the hits that gets the money in this funny old world of pop. The bassist and the drummer might be lucky, but they never seem to get a lot. You start out high school buddies and swear allegiance for all time. But when the checks come rolling in, it's cash or I resign. But the saddest tune a band can play, and even the nightingales are scared, is the sound of a lawyer's doorbell that rings in Berkeley Square. Hang on, hang on, Anthony, I've got to let the dog out. Yes, carry on. I, I'm, 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 I've still got the thread. <laughs>